kind of a non-standard use of the slab tool. But so the first thing I'm going to do is click the slab tool over here in the upper left. And you'll see that first thing it wants me to select is the support. So I'm going to select this fill surface. And I'm going to make the thickness two inches. And that's basically um, all we need to do here. The, the top of slab is just saying that we want to use this surface at the top of this slab. If I were to change that to bottom of slab, it's going to shift the, the slab surface up. So, it's, so, the sur so the fill surface is being used in the bottom. But in this case, we want top of slab. That's good. And the limits we'll get into a little later because that's, that's really used for more standard flat slab elements. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go ahead and do Control H and hide that fill surface. So now all we see is the slab we just created. And um, so now we're going to create, uh, now we've, we've done that, um, I'm going to create some, uh, some beams. And I'm going to use, there's basically two beam tools here. Um, the first beam tool basically uses a, uh, a line element in 3D to hang the, the geometry of the, of the beam. Um, so that's, that's fine. Uh, what I want to use in this, in, this, um, in this case is a multi-support beam. And the advantage of that is that it takes two inputs. It takes a location and plan, which could be a grid line in this case. And then it takes, an ele it takes a position and elevation, um, which in this case will be the, the roof slab. So it takes those two inputs, and if either one of those inputs changes, if the location and plan changes, or if the roof slab changes, then it'll, it'll automatically um, alter the, the multi-support column, or multi-support beam, I should say. So there, there are some advantages to using the multi-support beam tool. So I'm going to click that over in the, the left here. And you may rem recall from last week that um, I seem to be having, uh, there was something going on and I wasn't able to select something. What was happening is this, this window wasn't showing up. It was, it was somewhere off screen, I, I, I believe, because I'm working at a much lower resolution than I typically do on my screen. So occasionally, if, if, if you know we're going to be working at a very low resolution, it may happen that, that a window might get, get lost off the screen there. But uh, it's easy to solve. Just go to a high resolution, and, and you'll be able to find it right away. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to choose, in this case, the north-south uh, grid lines, which you can see indicated here, 1 through 9. I'm going to click the first one, hold down the Control button, and select the rest of them. And you'll see in this selection window that as I select more of them, it increases the count of elements I've selected. So now I have nine elements. And to bring those into my multi-support window, I just have to click Finish. And it places them right there. It says multiple because it's taking multiple inputs. So um, like I said before, this first alignment uh, field is for its position, the beam's position and plan. And the uh, support, in this case, is its position and elevation. So I'm going to select the slab for the support. And right away, um, I see you know, a whole bunch of beams that are running off into infinity because we haven't yet um, limited them. So maybe just to kind of, since it seems it's a bit distracting to see these going off into space, um, maybe the first thing I'll do is limit their uh, their ends. So the first thing I'll do is I'll pick a from, and in this case I'll pick a a grid line that I can use to um, to limit one side.
and then I'm going to select, in this case, the south grid line. And now once I've selected that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show the beams going in between them. Now, I don't really want a rectangular section. I mean, these aren't concrete beams. These are supposed to be steel section beams. So what I can do is you can see there's four tabs up here. I'm going to select the third tab, standard. And now I'm going to click this button over on the right here. And this is going to call up um, catalogs that are available in Digital Project V1 R4. Um, there's a lot of different catalogs uh, with standard steel sections. Um, some of the catalogs also include uh, various stair elements and um, other objects. It's worth taking a look at what's available in some of these catalogs. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the catalog to pop up because it's basically it's loading um, a lot of information from from these catalogs. So now I have I have the the AISC version 13. Um, if you if you don't have that popping up, you can find it in this tab here, and you should see. Um, under catalog, and then if you scroll down a bit, you should eventually find here's here's your steel sections. Here's IS, and right now we're we have the, the AI SC uh, V13 selected, so that's the one we have selected. And I'm going to go into the W shape. And in this case, I'm going to pick a W1045. I'm going to double click that W1045. And it's going to place that beam shape right in the, um, right in my input. So you can see now um, we have the beam shapes as they should be. Um, so I'm done there. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to do the same for the other direction. So I'll go a little bit quicker this time. And I'm going to select my... Now if I, want, if I want to, I can select them from the ge geometry view or I can select them from the, the tree view. So in this case, I'm going to hold down my control and select them from the, the tree view. Now I'm done, I'm going to hit finish. And already it's going to take um, the inputs from the previous time that I created the beam. So the beams when I, when I create them now are going to look a little bit odd um, because it's going to be using this, uh, it's going to be using the from and to are going to be a, a little different. So we're going to have to change that. The from in this case should be grid line one. This is one of our north-south grid lines. And then the two should be grid line nine. And once we do that, um, we should see, there we go. There's our, there's our beams as they should, should appear. So I'm going to click OK. And... Uh, this is not a bad time to save, so I'm just going to go up to File, Save. So um, now I'm going to uh, go back in and edit some of these beams. So right now, for instance, um, these perimeter beams, I want them to be a a bigger shape, a different shape beam, and I also want to to clean up that corner there. So what I can do is select my my perimeter beam here, I double click, and it takes me right into the editing mode for this beam. And 